Honestly, with this news, I don't know if it's a new low or a continuation of current lows, but that's true of everything that happens in the mainstream AAA video game industry now. This could be a new low, there could already be lower, but either way, we're trudging around in the fucking basement. With their dedicated communities, the focus on practicing and playing with characters for as much and as long as possible, and of course a diverse roster of those characters, fighting games are as I've said in past videos, especially positioned to prey upon and exploit their audiences with excessive aggressive monetization. And when it comes to aggressive monetization, Tecmo Koei is a dab friggin' hand. Whether it's fighting games like Dead or Alive or action games like Dynasty Warriors, Tecmo Koei will find a way to absolutely litter its games with ridiculous farcical amounts of downloadable content. Dead or Alive 6 especially is a fucking junk when it comes to monetization. At the time of talking, the game has not one, not two, not three, but four season passes. Four. If you go on the Steam page and you look at the DLC list of a long, 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 long DLC list, you'll find out that all of the additional content totted up at the bottom runs to $1,967.93. But it's Dead or Alive 6's latest scam that has turned heads and rightly so because Jesus. Christ. I would say that this is definitely a new low for Tecmo Koei as a company, but I have played Dynasty Warriors 9, so the jury's out. They're charging you to change your character's hair colour. That's... that's the, the gist of it. I say the gist, that's the actual fact. That's the whole thing of it. They will charge you a dollar a pop to change your character's hair. Not to unlock a character's hair colour. Oh no, that would be almost too fair. Mm -mm. You are charged to change the hair colour. You are buying the change, not the colour. Recently, Tecmo Koei introduced premium tickets to Dead or Alive 6. Mmm, sounds great already. These premium tickets allow players to buy a la carte DLC, individual DLC, previously locked behind a season pass. These premium tickets can be bought in bunches of two to 50, and it's these tickets, which cost roughly a dollar each, that you will use to change your character's hair color if you're out of your mind. I mean, like, if you're spending a dollar to change the character's hair color, are you out of your mind? Are you out of your, what's wrong? What's gone wrong? What has gone wrong that's led you down the path of paying a dollar to change the character's hair colour? And again, I must emphasise, you're paying for the change. If you change a character's hair colour to, I don't know, fucking pink, right? And then you change it to, I don't know, fucking green. And then you want to change it back to, oh, I don't know, fucking pink again. You've got to pay again. You've got to pay again to go pink again. I've gone over this story several times since I first saw it, just to make sure that I'm not imagining it, or that I've got something wrong. But looking at it again and again and again, the story never changes. You are charged a dollar or a premium ticket every time you want to change a character's hair colour to one of the 16 hair colours on offer. I mean, that's that's just incredible. It's amazing. You Changing the hair colour is a standard feature even in games that have a lot of cosmetic DLC. It's usually a given that you at least have that level of control over how your character looks without needing to spend more money. But this, not only, not only does it have the goal to charge for hair colour, but to not even let you keep the colour is just remarkable. It's not like Tecmo Koei are ashamed of this either. They're quite proud of themselves for what they've done. In a Twitter post announcing the premium tickets, it says right there in the corner that they can also be used to change a character's hair color. How exciting. The replies were not as uh, enthusiastic. A lot of fans are pissed off at this news and quite rightly, here's one tweet that says, when you think DOA can't go lower, 
Teen Ninja shows, there's no limits for their bullshittery. Man, what a way to ruin the franchise. And Hanoka keeps being unoptimized with weird flickering and strange animations. I like the dig at the end on behalf of presumably the poster's favorite character, which you might as well do. When you're complaining about a fighting game and there's a wider community issue that you're talking about, make sure that you throw in something on behalf of your favorite character. There's always some balance or optimization issue with it, isn't there? Vent that out at the same time. You won't have a better opportunity. Tecmo Koei has, for quite some time, been a special breed of despicable. Its games are cynically put together. The whole Dynasty Warriors series by now is cannibalized assets, what I call auto-erotic asset flipsiation. Each of the company's games are buoyed by this ridiculous amount of downloadable content, made worse by the fact that so many of Tecmo Koei's games are sloppily, cheaply cobbled together, only half localized sometimes because that costs money. It must have pumped out about a dozen games by now featuring the exact same character models with the exact same movesets in the exact same maps, and every single time it releases one of these games with the same recycled assets, it charges money for any of the new shit it might have and some of the old shit as well. And you get something like Dynasty Warriors 9 where the word cynical doesn't even fucking cover it. They water down all the characters in that game, make them all share a small handful of weapons, and then they bring back old weapons from the previous series, but they're in fucking season passes and bullshit like that. People on the Dead or Alive subreddit aren't exactly happy with this news, very much like the Twitter person we spoke about earlier. It's almost as if charging one dollar just to change a character's hair is fucking despicable. Though because it's the Dead or Alive subreddit, Reddit, some people have other priorities like this arse. Apparently this arse isn't as big as the arse used to be, so they nerfed that. They've, they've nerfed an arse. They have nerf all girls, but sad face. So you know, it's a sad time for Dead or Alive. Very sad time. Tecmo Koei ultimately is disgusting. It's a disgusting little company with a disgusting little business model, a disgusting lack of commitment to quality, and a disgusting need to riddle each and every game with a comical amount of premium fucking guff. As I've said of the company in the past, its games have only gotten shoddier and cheaper while expecting more and more money, which is reflective of the video game industry as a whole. But not Electronic Arts, not Activision, not Ubisoft, nor any of the other mainstream AAA publishers we complain about on this channel are quite as fucking shabby as Tecmo Koei. Tecmo Koei is a fucking shabby company with shabby products. Please don't spend a dollar to change a character's hair. I just, not, not for me, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna play these fucking games, but for yourselves, at the very least, have some dignity. Tecmo Koei sure as shit isn't gonna have any. Dignity is very low on that company's list of priorities, but you can have some. A dollar. A dollar to change your hair color. I could change your hair color in real life for free right now. It wouldn't be very good and would involve tomato ketchup, but I could do it. A dollar to change your Tecmo Koei, fuck off. Fuck off of your bullshit. And fuck off while you do it. Fucking bricks. Unbelievable. I, I mean, I'd say, no, no, it's very believable, but it's pathetic all the same. Tecmo Koei is fucking pathetic. Oh, wait a minute. Dead or Alive 6 is the one that had the $93 season pass. Oh, fuck off.